Hey guys, Aaron here. Uh, today we're going to be replacing the multi-function or turn signal switch on this uh, Chevy truck here. Now, this is a fairly common issue to go out on these vehicles. GM uses the same multi-function switch on a ton of these trucks, ranging from 2001 through about 2009. You can see them in the Chevy Tahos, um, the Avalanches, Silverados, Suburbans, even the Trailblazers. For GMC, uh, the, the Envoys, Sierras, Yukons, um, all have it. Even the Hummers, the H1 and H2, and some Isuzu and Oldsmobile vehicles do have this same style switch. Now, with this particular truck, what we're having um, is we're having a little bit of an issue with the turn signal. When we go to turn the turn signal on, you can see the brights come on as well, uh, which can be definitely an issue when you're driving. Um, doesn't happen with the left side, but it does happen with the right side. We get that. So I went ahead and traced it to the multi-function switch, which is this um, column that, that sticks out right here. Um, we're going to be taking off the bristles uh, underneath and, and below the steering wheel um, and removing the connector and such like that. So before we begin, let's go ahead and go over the tools that we're going to need to get the job done right. So we're going to need a 3 8 ratchet, a T25 torque socket. Um, one of the bolts is harder to get to, so we're going to be using a quarter inch open end wrench and a T25 bit. You can get these at any auto parts store or Home Depot. I'm uh, going to be using a pick to remove some of the connectors and a plastic trim removal tool to remove the bezel um, and trim pieces off of the steering column. All right, so now that we're back in the vehicle, the first thing we're going to need to do is gain access to the bolts and the connector to this switch. To do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hand and we're simply just gonna pull on this trim piece that goes all the round, all the way around your radio. Um, depending on what you know trim model you have, you might have some switches right here. You're gonna need to disconnect the wiring for those, um, but this one doesn't. If you do have an adjustable um, steering column, go ahead and lower the steering column all the way to the lowest position. And then with the ignition on and your foot on the brake, go ahead and take your shifter and put it down into the lowest gear that it can go. That's definitely going to help us remove this little trim piece here. Set it out of the way. Put it in the back seat. Now we can focus on the top and the bottom trim pieces. Um, before we do that and remove any screws, go ahead and put your vehicle back in the park. Take your key out, that way nothing bad happens, you don't accidentally start it or anything like that. Now depending on what trim level and what vehicle you have, there's actually I think two different switches um, that you can purchase. There's either one with or without cruise control function. This one obviously does. Um, so I will actually include both links in the description. You can click on which one you have. It'll take you to a direct link so you can purchase the correct part for your vehicle. Now before we get to the bolts underneath the column, um, simply just take this little um, lever that you're using to adjust your column, pull on it real hard and it'll come right out. If you need to get a flat blade screwdriver under there, you could do that. Just be careful not to mar this up. This is plastic and it'll definitely scratch with a pair of pliers. Now before we split the plastic apart, um, we're going to need to remove two bolts. You're going to see three holes in the bottom of your steering column. These two front holes house two bolts. Now, luckily for me, somebody's done me the favor and actually removed these bolts and uh, they didn't put them back, so I don't have to remove them. I am gonna try to find some that do work. Um, if my memory serves me correct, I believe the T15 Torx bit that you're gonna need to remove those two um, bolts right there. I have seen on some cars, some Phillips head screws that um, are in there. Um, so once we have those removed, we're basically ready to split these two halves. And the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to take my plastic trim removal tool and wedge it in between here. And we're simply going to lift this up right here. And we're not going to separate them yet because there's two hinges in the back. There's one on the left side and one on the right. So don't go, in, don't go just, you know, prying it off. You're going to break those hinges and it's going to be very hard to get them back together. Yeah, the 
the top off or free to take the bottom one off. Just simply slides down. Now one thing to note, um, this little grommet can rip after time of being in the heat or in the cold, they can get hard. I'll go ahead and include a link in the description where you can buy a replacement one. Um, just a little dust boot to get, you know, keep dust out of this area where electrical connections are. I also included a link for um, the top and bottom replacement pieces in case you do break yours. I've done it before, it's very common, and they're only about 20, 30 bucks for the set. Now before we go removing the two bolts that hold the switch in, um, we're going to go ahead and remove the three connectors that go to the switch. There's one on the side, one on top, and then there is a pigtail that goes down here that's taped to another wiring harness down below. I'm just going to cut the tape and zip tie it uh, to secure it afterwards. It's probably the easiest method, um, but I like just to get a little pick here and um, pick off the release tabs just to lift them up. That way we can remove those connectors. Now the factory service manual does call for us to remove the steering wheel in order to get this bolt out. However, I came up with a little trick um, to avoid that just to save us some time, about 10, 15 minutes worth of labor to do that. Um, I go ahead and take my T25 bit that I showed in earlier in the video, along with my quarter inch wrench. They fit inside of each other. And by doing that, we could be sneaky and take this bolt off. It's on there pretty good with some Loctite, so you might struggle at first, but once you, once you break it free, um, you can go ahead and turn it. It's going to be probably more difficult one out of the two to remove. Alright, once we got that uh, bottom bolt out, we can go ahead and remove the top one. Using a T25 Torx and the switch simply comes off. From here, it's pretty much reverse procedure, except uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the wiring harnesses in first. Uh, just makes it a little bit easier versus when it's bolted down. Uh, let's see here. That one in. That way you know they're seated properly of having it bolted down just listen for that click it might be easier to get this one now as well there we go and the last one now there's a little tang here um, I believe that's for our horn contact make sure that it's compressed when you go to put it in it's fully seated this bottom one can be tricky to get started um, if you do have some issue getting in, you can get some needle nose pliers and start it to turn it with that. So once we get everything bolted back together, of course, the last thing that we're going to need to do is check the operation of our new switch just to make sure everything's working uh, and the diagnosis was correct. And as you can see, in my case, when I turn on the right turn signal, um, don't get any high beams coming on so definitely success there i hope this video has helped you out if it has please like and subscribe if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave something in the comment section guys thanks for watching and i'll see you next time